Hi folks, Provincial Claude Opter back at you. Today I'm going to be making and canning very low cost, very tasty, delicious apple jam. Let's get started. So to start off I like to get my prep work all done, which includes washing and rinsing my jars and my lids. Get my uh, handy tools out for canning and cooking. I've got this pot here that I'll be cooking the jam in. This jar, this, bleh, yeah, there's that awkwardness. There, this pot will be for processing the jam when I'm done. Over here, I've got my measuring cups and my very basic three ingredients: apple juice, sugar, and the serto. Now to start off, you mix your serto or pectin, whatever you're using, in with a quarter cup of sugar in a bowl and you're going to keep se separate from everything else. Next, you're going to take six cups of apple juice and pour it in the pot. As you can see, I already did the other four cups. And then next, you're going to take seven cups of sugar and mix it in the pot as well. More of that awkwardness again. I was wrong because I got a quarter cup already. It's seven or six and three quarter cups in with your apple juice. Then you're going to want to turn it on to a medium to high heat. So, of course, I put it on medium high. You want to stir it around and you want to bring it to a boil. And that's all. You don't have to constantly stir, but you want to stir until <clears throat> the sugar is, until it's mixed well, until it's mixed very well. Basically until the sugar pretty much dissolves in with the apple juice. I need both hands to to continue doing so. One second. As you're waiting for it to boil, I just keep stirring every now and then. Oh, I've also uh, turned my processing pot on max because I want to bring it to a boil. I want it boiling for when the time comes when I got to pour my jam into the jars. You'll start to notice that the juice is thickening up as it should with the amount of sugar that you have to use. But you want to consistently keep stirring it, not be over top of it stirring it all the time, but pretty consistently waiting for it to boil. Now that we have our jam at a boil, we can come back and take our mixture of our serto and quarter cup of sugar and we could add that. And we gotta stir that in. Stir that in nice and good. Want to bring it right back to a nice rolling boil. And once it gets back to a royal rolling boil, it's done. Nothing left to do but put it in your jars and throw it in the processing pot for at least five to ten minutes. 
See, very simple, very low cost too. It cost me like two dollars and fifty cents for the apple juice, two dollars for the sugar, and two dollars for the Serto. So six dollars and fifty cents, and it's gonna make. I'm betting around six small jars of uh, jam, but I maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. We're going to find out here. Turn the burner off. And let's... I'm going to jar this up and we'll see how much we got. I always like to leave a little bit of room at the top of the jar. Now as you can see I was a little off on my guess. I guessed six small jars. But I was also right on my guess because I used up every jar that I had and really I have just a little tiny bit left maybe enough to make like half of one of those mini jars but that's all right that's a good count I like that so now we're gonna put our lids on our jars you don't even have to do them tight but yeah just want them twisted enough so it's hard to do with one hand so that there's some give because these will, these lids will suction down and seal once they're in the rolling bowl in the processing pot. So I'm going to go ahead and put these on and then I'm going to put them in the pot. Now I got them all, the lids put on. Start putting them in the pot. Some people like to well, it really differs on what you're making, but some people like to leave theirs in the processing pot for half an hour or so. I've read up on it. It's not really necessary. Some things do need to be in longer, but for most jams, as long as you have them in there for roughly around 10 minutes or 5-10 minutes, It'll be just fine. But you definitely want them in the pot low enough so the lid is covered by, sorry if the camera's off, by at least a centimeter of water or half centimeter of water. My medium uh, jar is only maybe half a centimeter. But it's still going to get the boil, it's still going to get hot, it's still going to suction the, and seal the lids. So there we go. That is how you make a very cost of low cost, I keep wanting to say cost effective, but I guess it's that too, a very low cost, tasty, delicious apple jam. And yeah, I'll show you how it turns out. If you don't remember, if you haven't seen any of my last, any of my other videos, I do not like chunks in my jam. So my jams are usually smooth, just the way, uh, smooth and yeah, that's the way I like them. I don't like chunks of this and that in my jam. That's why I actually prefer to use apple juice as opposed to uh, real apples. I've done it both ways. And I prefer it this way just because no chunks. Although you can do apple, apple, bleh, do it with, there's that awkwardness. <laughs>
clod hopper I am. But you can do it with apples and just use the juice. But a lot most people like to use the the mushed up apple too, not me. So yeah. When this is all done and it cools down, we'll see how it turns out. Put it on some uh, bread with peanut butter. Well, it's been 10 minutes. <laughs> if you can hear that, the lids are already snapping. Which means they're locked and sealed. Look at that. Beautiful. Thing of beauty for all of six dollars and fifty cents. Now we just gotta wait for it to cool down and we could test her out. <laughs>